What's up guys, this is Brian Drake and this is Hi, taking a look today at a special game. But first of all, question of the day, what game would you like to see kidified? Now obviously you could do My Little Twilight Imperium, which would be cool, but why would you like to see a game Kidify? What is the point of seeing a game turn into a family game or kids style game? Let me know what you would like to see turn into a kid game in the comments below and why that is. But today, we're taking a look at My Little Scythe. What was the song you were singing? Right? This little sigh of mine, my little let it sigh, let it sigh, let it sigh. This is my life right here. Anyway, Harper and I and Carla, we played a couple games with My Little Side and we enjoyed it because it's kind of cool. But let's take a look right now how you play it and then we'll come back and talk about what we think about it. So this is the basic setup of the game right here. It's actually pre-set up. You take this tile that's needed, kind of randomize it, you spin it and then you flip it over, and then you populate the board with whatever it says based on who's playing. So if I'm playing the game, this one's playing the game, and that one's playing the game, you'd put these little tokens out in front of them uh, to denote kind of what's there, whether it's apples, crystals, or quest cards. So once these are done, you then can start playing the actual game of My Little Side. Everybody gets their own player board here. These are not on the board typically. You have your upgrade cards here, your spell cards here, your quest cards here. You have where you track everything on the board, whether you're uh, getting pies or whether you're getting friendship over here. Now this is for a three person game. The rules to, to my little side are very similar to Scythe, obviously because it's kind of a distilled version of that. Everyone gets one of these cards. It's kind of their personality trait. Uh, earn the trophy on t on your turn by reaching seven pies instead of eight. Your goal is to win the game by getting eight different trophies. And the way you do that, we'll talk about it, it's right up here, is there are a couple different ways to do it. One is to get eight friendship. That would be on this track over here to the left. Uh, get two of those upgrades, have three spell cards, have two quest cards done, eight pies, which would be this track over here, uh, win a fight or deliver four apples and four crystals to the center castle here. And the way you do that is on your turn, you can move just like inside. You have these actions that are down here. Uh, you also have a nice place to store your trophies, but we're gonna dump those for now. You have your actions. One would be move. Without crystals or apples, you can move two spaces. If you're carrying crystals and apples, you can only move one. You then have seek, which is where you take the dice. There are two different rolls that you can do. So there's one action here, one action here. You either take two blue, one red and a yellow, or two red, one blue and a yellow, and you roll those dice, and then you populate the board based on the results. So this would mean that I would put an apple on a red, a crystal on red, uh, or a diamond, whatever you call it, a diamond on blue, and then a quest token goes out on green. So you get to choose those. Now, if I were, for instance, to give gray to put a token on where gray is, with this person who's on gray, I would then put a crystal here, they would get to keep it, and then I would move up a friendship level for that. So when you're nice to people, that's how you move up this track over here. One of the ways to get a trophy is to have eight on the friendship track. So you can quickly go ahead and give a bunch of people things, move up that track. Now obviously the downside of that is you're setting your team, your, uh, your opponents up. Again, those are the two seeker actions there. Uh, the other one is, or the seek action, the other one is make. So you can turn two apples into two pies, raising up this track. You can turn two crystals into one of these spell cards. Again, if you have three spell cards, you uh, win, the, you get a trophy. And then last but not least, you can turn in an apple and a crystal for an upgrade. Now these are things like better move actions and better make actions, but they're all different. So uh, <laughs> mechanical frog, as one of your moves, move one of your seekers directly to an unoccupied space containing two or more resources. You can kind of jump around the board pretty fast in different ways. Make just makes your make better. Take a random spell card from any other player for three crystals. This one is just a better version of uh, of make so it's neat because it gives you a chance to really upgrade your own personal player board like that uh, that's how you play the game you move you make you seek first person to get eight trophies wins the game now what I love though are these cute little miniatures now I painted these but they don't come painted but they uh, they give you a painting guide for how to paint them so they're really really cute um, the hardest thing I've ever painted were these cute little eyes like I don't think I've ever painted anything that hard and I've painted all kinds of Star Wars stuff and um, uh, Mansions of Madness and all that, but this is without a doubt the hardest thing I've ever painted. But that's how you play the game. One last thing would be these quest tokens. If you land on one, 
you do the quest. If you do it, it says you pay a gem to place any two apples or gems on an occupied space. You then keep that card. If you have two of those cards, that's another way to get trophies. That's it. Let's talk about what we think about this, and we'll be done. So that's it. That's how you play. What did you think about this? What was your favorite part about my little scythe? She did like the pie fight because you won the game with the pie fight. Had just enough power. She had just enough pies to beat me. Daddy said the five. That I, I mean, he got the six. I got, the, I six, got the seven. Seven pies, and I only had six, which means she won because I didn't have any cards. Now, here's the interesting thing about my little side. It takes one of our favorite games, Carl and I's absolute one of our favorite games side, and boils it down into a much smaller, condensed version. It's cute, right? What do you think about the figures, the little plastic miniatures? You like those? Who's your favorite? Monkey. The monkey? The monkey's cute. Actually, the eagle. The eagles are cool. We haven't painted any of them except the bear, though, yet. I've got to finish painting these characters. Now, what I do love, it comes with a painting guide to show you how to paint these characters. So, the game itself, fun little cute mechanics. It's actually interesting entertaining. Now, it is. it does have we a... We saw this game at the game store. We did see it at the game store. They actually had it there at the game store, too. We stole it where we got it. I did. Well, no, we got it from Stonemaier Games, didn't we? But... <laughs> we got it from all our games toys and fun. You're a knucklehead. Listen, what I love about the game though is it allows you to play the side experience on a much smaller, lower level to where you can get your kids involved into the action selection problem. Now here's the thing about it though. What it does though, this is the thing, it doesn't teach concepts, and here's my opinion, it doesn't teach concepts, it reinforces concepts. And what I mean by that is there are consequences to your choices and actions inside the model side. What it does is it helps cement the idea that if you do something, there's a consequence for it in a good way. So if I go here, well, here's what I get. So it teaches that basic concept of if I go here, I'll then get two uh, crystals or I'll get an uh, apple. Or if I win this fight or if I you know, deliver these crystals, I'll win the game. So it helps understand the consequences of actions in the game. So I like how it kind of instills that into uh, the game. I do like that it's a good entry level for this kind of age group here. She has a blast with it. It's really cute. Uh, still a little bit, a lot to it to learn in this game uh, as far as uh, as far as age level. You know, you know your kid, you know kind of the what they can and can't handle. So uh, we played it in teams. It says eight plus. Harper's a little bit young for that, but we played it in well, teams. Played by she played by herself, but we helped her a little bit with it. But we wanted to play it just to get the feel for it. 45 minutes is about right. It really doesn't take that long. No, you were on your own team. What are you talking about? Anyway, and so uh, we enjoy it. We think you should check it out. If you have kids, especially around that six, seven, eight year old range and older, they would really like this because it's cute, first of all, and it's just a fun game. It's a good game that teaches you how to do some things as far as concepts in gaming and in life in general, understanding if I do this, this will happen. So that's my little side. I'm Brian Drake, and this is Harper here on the Dice Houdini. Tower. Harper Houdini here on the Dice Tower with the latest retro. Enjoy that target. Hey, we're going to be on the cruise, aren't we? On the Dice Tower cruise. We're going to have a good time, have a fun time. We'll see y'all there. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower 